Yeah, so from a discovery point of view, the, the labels are useful in those techniques, but I think from a clinical point of view, from what you're trying to do, from what we're trying to do, uh, we are really trying to avoid labels. Uh, be <coughs> largely because I guess we're both mostly interested in humans. Right? And, and with humans, there are very few options with labels. Uh, there is ICG and Insigning Green, uh, in the green and, and the methylene blue. Uh, but neither of those are really uh, useful from a fluorophore point of view, I think very useful at least. Um, and most of them, the really useful ones, are poisonous. So tomorrow, <coughs> maybe you see some people from the Department of Ophthalmology. And uh, as far as I know, even now for, uh, for phases three investigations, uh, big drug companies, require uh, uh, fluorescent dye imaging because of the leaky blood vessels in the, in the retina. So, mm. so, which is, the dye is what? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Any other question? If not, please. I uh, wonder if there is any hope uh, we can uh, control microcirculation of uh, cancerous tissue by means of optogenesis in uh, use applied in uh, parasites. I'm sure you could you could control it, but maybe there are uh, certainly from, from the point of view of dis scientific discovery, it yeah. could be very useful. Maybe uh, there is any research but probably for controlling it just to kill the tumor. Uh, there are many other uh, ways to activate uh, the, this. Maybe as assistant of a better or optimized treatment protocol, if, uh, mm -hmm. that we can put the patient under normal uh, uh, treatment and the use uh, as assistant uh, controlling parasites uh, of microcirculation yeah. of tumor. You should actually. Quite it's careful a, of that. It's a team. There is a downside. There is a downside to doing this, and, and um, I think the, the breakthrough of the year in 2013 was uh, um, immunomod uh, immunomodulation therapy mm -hmm. for cancer. Yeah. Right. And the, the idea behind immunomodulation therapy, I'm a physicist here, yeah, so physicist Bar well. uh, Bar correct me where I go wrong. But anyway. Uh, so I think the, the general idea is that you try to recruit your own immune system uh, to fight the cancer. And generally, uh, your uh, the cancers are very clever, so they can stop your uh, the T cells from activating. So with immunomodulation therapy, you stop the blocker of the T cells from blocking the T cells, and then your own immune system is is recruited. But one of the things they found in a recent study of that is they tried also to block the microcirculation because they said, yeah, it, this is extraordinarily effective, but there are, in some cases, of the order of 20 or more uh, percent of um, 
patients who don't respond at all, and they don't know why they don't respond. So they thought, okay, let's try blocking the microcirculation as well, and then we have a double whammy. Turns out that when you block the microcirculation, the therapy didn't work in anybody because the microcirculation uh, is inherently necessary for the immune response. Okay? okay? So you need to be careful that these things are not distinct, they're all interactive and interrelated. Uh, so uh, maybe you need to be careful. Um, as I said, there are other ways, to, uh, antivascular treatments which are already available and, and reasonably <coughs> successful. The beauty of the optogenetics is that, that it's controllable by light, so you can you can study things very closely on individual vessels. So you can do a lot of work. For example, you can make a tumor on a chick egg. Right? Chick egg is a wonderful uh, technique for all of us because, especially physicists, because you don't need ethical permission to work with an egg. Right? But you have a microcirculation, you can create a tumor uh, within the egg, and you can work on this. So we can. Uh, learn quite a lot uh, from this, but uh, presumably optogenetics works in the GK, I don't know, I haven't tried it, but, um, but from the point of view, as I say, of scientific discovery, I think it would be really useful, but maybe for treatment, I, I, I don't see, I would see um, more things like epilepsy being maybe uh, benefiting from optogenetics, where you could switch off selectively the neurons that are um, causing the epileptic fit um, at the appropriate time. And this probably means that somebody has a light switch inside their brain, literally. And <laughs> um, there's all kinds of complications associated with that. The biggest problem with that at the moment is uh, that in the United States, there is no, uh, there is no permission for anybody to uh, genetically modify neurons, as I understand it, in a human. Um, in human, in order to do optogenetics, there is one license in the uh, in the European Union, but I, or at least there was 12 months ago. Um, so it, it's you know it's rapidly developing, but it's still very difficult to do. But you can see the power of it. You can you can control you know, which part of the brain is going to work, which which vessels uh, are on or off, um, which neurons will fire or won't fire. You can selectively uh, genetically modify the specific neurons that you want to control with blue light, and maybe you can control another one with green light, for example, and so on. So you can control different parts of the brain with different things. So I think all that is is very, uh, very, very exciting. The bit that I wanted to show was that it seems now that the textbooks will have to be rewritten to say that actually the whole um, capillary has uh, some muscular capacity, or some, at least some, some, it's not a smooth muscle, I guess Professor Barry could explain it better, but, uh, but in any case the pericyte can, uh, can constrict the vessel. So, one of the, so there are many interesting issues. Actually, one of the best optogenetic uh, group is working maybe 100 meters away from here because uh, Dr. Berini's group is using optogenetic animals for studying epilepsy, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. This is maybe 100 meters away from here. The techniques was uh, uh, brought back from New Heaven, uh, from Dr. Bujaki's lab, who was the uh, winner of the European Brain Prize uh, when it was first given three years ago. <coughs> so therefore, they can explain how to switch on and off uh, neurons within the brain by light. But one thing you mentioned, I am not uh, aware of the, uh, the details, but one has to keep in mind that uh, the tumors have very high angiogenetic, angiogenetic capability. So they produce uh, uh, vascular growth factors they, they produce new vessels, but these new vessels are not as no, as the normal vessels. Maybe they lack the pericytes, maybe they have modified pericytes uh, different from the healthy ones. So it's, it's an open field work. Any other questions? <coughs> if not, I, I guess that uh, someone has some 
announcement because today there is a big event, uh, maybe the first time we can visit the new Ally uh, 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 plant, which would be a surprise for everyone. So you have never seen before a, a hall of uh, 10,000 meters square and uh, the technical uh, problem was to avoid vibration. So the avoiding vibration in a huge building is very difficult. And here the technical uh, requirement is having a system which avoids vibration <coughs> for more than six uh, uh, micrometers in 100 meters. So, and, uh, and uh, I don't know where the cork is coming from, but there is a huge layer of cork beneath the, the ground. Which is nothing. Yes. <laughs> so we, 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 Portugal is, is now happy because we uh, bought all the cork, and, uh, and the green people are sad because a lot of trees gone. So I don't know, but uh, it has been a huge uh, experience. And the Venice, uh, maybe let you say the details. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, on Monday, we, we collected the list of people because unfortunately there is a limitation that only 15 people can take part. Uh, yesterday, I think that we, we could find the list. And, and please do not forget that another very strong limitation is that you have to bring closed, preferably leather shoes. So I, I would ask to emphasize this as many times as I can. And uh, at uh, 2.50 so in the afternoon, we, we will gather here. And at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we will go by three cars. So hopefully, we, we can visit it. Mm -hmm. At least, I, I was assured that everything will be all right. Thanks. Thanks. <coughs> And that now is lunchtime, is it? Exactly.